Hi, it's Luke with Out of Darts. Today we are checking out a brand new high-powered Springer. This is the Tryon from Game Face Brands. Let's get going. Gameface Brands has been around for a while, and they've had a little bit of a rocky start as a blaster brand. Gameface Brands is owned by Crossman, which owns a wide range of airsoft products, uh, uh, compressed air products and a, and a variety of other sporting goods products. Their previous offerings have been very much hit or miss, and I'm gonna say mostly miss. They started off with the Havoc Prime, which was essentially a slight retooling of the CETA from Jet Blaster. Now the CETA had a whole host of issues from performance to quality control and manufacturing defects, all of which we've had to deal with here at the shop because we did sell them on the shop and we had to uh, frequently repair and replace blasters. Before we get going too far though, I do wanna mention that this blaster well, one of these blasters was sent to me by Game Face at no cost, and we do intend to have these on the shop in the next month or so. Maybe by the time you're seeing this video, it'll already be live. Uh, the other blaster was sent from my buddy Tan, so thank you for sending that over to me as well. He got it over to me a little, beat them for actually getting it because he managed to grab it from uh, the End War event. The Tryon is a pretty standard high-powered Springer. It's going to feel a lot like a Nexus. It's gonna feel a lot like a Talonclaw or other blaster. It is a short dart only blaster. We've got an angled foregrip up front and we've got a 15 round magazine. Uh, some really nice quality of life features throughout. Uh, we've got M-lock barrel up here, so we can actually attach all kinds of different attachments here. We've got Picatinny rail up front, and we've got a twist lock front barrel nub, which means that people like Ton, my buddy, has already designed a barrel that can replace this with a scar-like barrel, which is pretty cool. The breech itself does feature a skinny pusher, which means that inside here, this pusher is narrow enough for the feed lips of standard magazines to fit inside. While we're talking about the Magwell, this blaster is of course compatible with the Tryon magazines from Game Face, the, ones that, the one that comes with the blaster, and these are also available separately. It is also surprisingly uh, compatible with standard talons, tachis, or if you happen to have katana mags from Jet Blaster, they are also directly compatible. I would assume that the Katana compatibility comes from their heritage of Jet Blaster, where we've got uh, their previous two offerings. Anybody that bought those, they'll make sure that their old mags are still compatible. I think they've done a really nice job with this magwell. It's slightly flared, so I find that the mags go in there really nicely. And that brings me to the biggest thing about this blaster. I believe the designer's name is Chris, uh, and they are very much paying attention to the hobby. From my understanding, he did all of the engineering and design work on this blaster, and it is really a well put together blaster. I think the styling is fabulous. I like the two color schemes. I think it's got a very nice look and feel. The darts themselves are also of note. These are the, they're calling these Game Face Pro darts. Great name, uh, lightweight for extra speed. Uh, my initial thoughts on the darts, just looking at them, they seem like the build quality is quite good. Uh, the heads don't rip off any easier than our best in class worker Gen 3 Plus. One thing I will note is that looking down, while the length is identical, the head is a little bit longer and the foam is not as thick on the outer side as worker. So it doesn't feel quite as sturdy when squeezing it here. And it, it's kind of hard to show on camera here, but basically the, the hole in the green dart is actually larger than the hole in the Worker Gen 3. I can't see these darts taking over as far as the community hobby's most popular one, uh, given the price point, uh, because Worker darts are $16 for 200, and these, I almost never lose a head. They're just fabulous. They, we're gonna do a video on this, but they've been my favorite. But these seem to be very comparable, um, very, very close and, and good quality, which is nice to see. I also really like the shape in them. We've got a little uh, 
it's almost a heart. It's like an arrow heart kind of shape. A couple of quality of life things beyond the skinny pusher. Um, this grip up front is a little small, but it does feel very good. However, if you don't like it, you just take it off and there's Picatinny underneath there. So you've got a lot of options as far as mounting. In back, we've got a buffer tube style stock and it is extendable so you can take it on and off. In addition to this sort of futuristic, uh, almost sci-fi looking uh, stock, which I really do love the looks of, uh, you can actually take this entire assembly off with the screws here and on the sides and replace the grip with a standard grip and replace the stock with a buffer tube. Uh, the, the underneath here is a real buffer tube uh, compatible stock. So you've got a lot of options as far as versatility. And that leads me to one downside is the ergonomics. For my average adult size hands, I just never really like thumb hole stocks. I would much rather see this part cut out. It looks really, really nice. Like the styling feels great, but the actual comfort, I just always am cramming my palm against the side of the actual thumb hole stock. So while it looks really nice, I don't think it's quite as comfortable as I would like. So I will certainly be replacing mine with a buffer tube and designing a custom grip for it that fills out my hand and fits my hand a little better. The mag release feels great, although I could see adding a extension here just so you can do it without having to use your offhand. And I really, really like the trigger. The trigger itself is extremely snappy. Load up a mag here. It is just a very small trigger pull. It's probably the closest thing we've got in the Nerf blaster space or hobby blaster space to a, a hair trigger. I think it's only got about, what is that? Probably, let's say two mils of travel, two and a half millimeters of travel at the lowest point. So it's really this nice snappy trigger and it's not a heavy trigger pull either. As expected, we do have slam fire, so you can hold the trigger and fire as many as you want, as fast as you can pump that prime. I'm not gonna say you're gonna do that very accurately, however. Up top, we've got some sights. I think they're of moderate use. I mean, you can definitely get them in the right position to actually make them functional, and there is enough room to get my, my eye line down low enough to actually see that. Up top, we've actually got a slide lock here as well. So if you have primed and you need to get the slide back, you can simply push this up and you can slide back again, which actually should let me double and triple load. Let's see if I can load three. Okay, I should have three darts in there now. They work pretty well. So if you wanna work on a little shotgun style blast or multi-shot scatter blast, you can certainly do that. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of familiar designs here and it's very, very clear that they've been watching what the hobby is doing and where the trends are going. The most obvious being this blaster comes with spring spacers right out of the box and they look pretty much identical to the, you know, fairly obvious design of the spring spacers I made for the Nexus. It's really cool to see companies actually watching what we're doing and improving that. So with a simple quarter turn, you can take this out, you can put one, or two spring spacers on there. And this adds more pre-compression pre on the spring. And just like that, we've gone from 130 FPS all the way up to 200. If you put a single spacer in there, you'll get, I believe, somewhere around 170, 180. But essentially, this blaster is ready for the entire range of performance right out of the box, which is a fabulous feature. I really think that is such a fantastic way to do it. Now, one comment that uh, my buddy Coop made uh, on a review is that there's nowhere to store these uh, spring spacers. So that's something to keep in mind. He actually said he lost both of his. I have not lost mine yet, but I would have loved to have seen somewhere in here. I mean, it seems like you could have had little, little hole to tuck these in or something, but, uh, or perhaps in the base of the grip, I could certainly see somewhere where these could go because when you're not using them, pretty easy to misplace. Should you misplace yours, hit us up. I'm pretty sure these are almost identical to the Nexus size. So we probably have something available if you ever do need to replace them. This is the spring. I think there's gonna be pretty little reason to actually upgrade the spring because the only reason you'd wanna do that is if you were trying to get above 200, but we will do some testing and if we have any springs that sort of match that to get this up to say the 250 range for those playing in that upper echelon, we will certainly do so. More on that later or in the description if we figured it out in the time in between. 
One of the biggest pros to this blaster, to me, is the very slim profile. It just feels like a skinny boy or a skinny, I don't know, something. It's very slim compared to a lot of the other blasters. It's kind of hard to describe. Um, and additionally, I feel like the build quality is just fantastic. It feels very, very solid. Um, what I'm seeing overall is thicker shells across the entire blaster compared to others. It's a little bit hard to measure because of how things are tapered, but it seems like it's gotta be, uh, you know, a little thicker than say the Rival shells or the Nexus shells. It's either that or there's just good rigidity throughout with a lot of additional webbing and a lot of additional overhangs. And I have no doubt that this is going to hold up very well in actual gameplay. I think these colors are really nice. You've got two different options and they're kind of different than other things that are on the market. I'm personally loving this sort of teal, teal color. That's definitely in my realm. Coming in at $79.99, I think this is a, going to be a very popular blaster. We will have these on the shop. So as I said before, Disclaimer, however you want to take that, uh, this is a product that we will ultimately have on outofdarts.com. I am thrilled to see another company like Gameface in the hobby space, making blasters for us and really pushing things along because Dart Zone started it off with the Dart Zone Pro and the Nexus, but I really think it's nice to see uh, more competition because we don't want a single company dominating the entire space that leads to, well, the only thing I can think of is Elite 2.0. I'm so terrible, but <laughs> we don't want to see uh, innovation stagnate and the more competition that's out there, whether it's in small hobby sellers or large companies, uh, the better for all of us ultimately, because we get more offerings, more competition, better products, improvements, and uh, grow this hobby overall. At the end of the day, I think this is a stellar offering. My only minor detractor basically can be fixed by modding. It's, it's replacing this grip. And while I almost don't wanna give it five stars, I think it kind of deserves five stars. It's a solid blaster. It's very reliable. It's consistent. It shoots well. And uh, even though it's a couple years later, I do think it's a you know very strong contender against the, the Nexus or all of the Pro Series for that matter. My only, again, minor complaint is just the feel of thumbhole stock, and that's very much a personal preference. I know people that just love thumbhole stocks, both in looks and how they feel. So it's definitely, that part of it is certainly a personal preference. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about having more competition here. It's interesting to see to me, but I wanna know, is this a blaster you're interested in picking up? Do you have too many springers already? Do we have too many springers on the market, period? Let me know down below, and until next time, I'm out of darts. If you enjoy our content and the shop, please sign up for our newsletter. There's a link down in the description. We've got a monthly newsletter that has uh, basically shop news, hobby news, and product releases, as well as upcoming projects and things we're working on. We promise we won't send you any spam, just a single email per month, and we'll keep everything short and to the point.